What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, and welcome to episode 9 of our 30-part series on every single G-Max Pokemon. It's a series where my guest and I go in-depth on every Gigantamax Pokemon out there. We'll be covering their stats, move pools, potential teammates, impact on the Sword and Shield Draft League meta, and at the end, give it a ranking. Once the series is over, I'll make a video covering the top 10 G-Max Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Last week, if you missed it, my guest and I covered the three G-Max Galar starters, and if you missed any of the videos, I've linked them in the description and in the cards. This week, though, we're covering one of the thickest boys out there, G-Max Copperaja. But as always, I am not alone. I am joined by the coach of the Kyoto Samurots and lover of Nikos, Luxans. Hello everyone, I am Luxans. As you know, I'm very known for loving Nico. I'm coach of various draft teams and I'm here to talk about GMX Copperaja. Lux is a great guy, um, one of the top notch weebs out there, okay? And uh, all of his links will be in the description, so make sure to go and check him out. And also, if you guys would like to vote on the next GMAX Pokemon that we cover, there is a straw poll link in the description and in the comments, and you can get your votes in there. Now, if you guys are excited for the video, make sure you leave a like on the video, comment your thoughts on GMAX Copperaja, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy competitive Pokemon content. But as always, we start off like this. Lux, what is your favorite thing about G-Max Copperaja? My favorite thing about G-Max Copperaja is definitely its unique mechanic in Steel Spikes. As you know, they're a very unique mechanic. Just the fact that you have an entirely different hazard that no other Pokemon gets is very good in my opinion. It's a niche that is so damn useful because Steel is one of the best types in the game, mostly because of its defensive abilities, but offensively it hits fairies for 25%, hits ice types for 25%, so if you get regular rocks up and steel spike, forget it, your ice types are not going to be appreciating anything that your opponent wants to take. This is definitely very true, just the fact that steel hits fairies, which are an even better type in my opinion in draft, is so good. We always cover stats, and to me the best stat it has is its HP. It's at 122, which is not its highest stat, but it's it definitely its most important one because defenses are pretty low at base 69 each. Would you agree with that, or would you say its massive 130 attack stat is the best one? No, I definitely agree that uh, its HP is its best stat, as the defenses are very lackluster in my opinion, but the extra bulk that G-Max provides, and especially with such a high amount of HP, is very nice to make up for those lacking defenses. Is really useful because it's a tax that very high at 130 like i said before but it's got 30 in its speed which makes it a ridiculously strong trick room option and with teleport being a thing now because of the release of pokemon home and the i guess creation of the teleport mechanic now in let's go it can just get in and get three free turns of trick room at the bare minimum and just do tons of damage to your opponent's team because its coverage options are also insane. This is very true we're talking about coverage here but even its abilities are just really good like Sheer Force with stuff like Iron Head, Play Rough is really good. And then you have Heavy Metal with Heavy Slam and Heat Crash, which can be very good as well. Its two abilities are very useful. And honestly, like the perfect abilities for it. Heavy Metal is the one ability I think of when I look at Copper Shaw. But Sheer Force, even though it doesn't have as many options as you would like it to have, the moves that do benefit from it being Iron Head, Rock Slide, Play Rough, and Zen Headbutt, are going to be run on pretty much, or at least one of them, will be run on pretty much every single Copper Adjust set that you have. I definitely agree with that. And if we're talking about like items as well, if we're allowing that on GMAX, Copper Aja gets so many options to abuse its amazing stats here as well. It really does. I mean, the HP is the biggest thing because when we talk about items, one of the most I guess common ones we think of is the Assault Vest, especially on high HP Pokemon. And when you have insane coverage options like Copper Ajad does have, we didn't even mention Earthquake, which is an amazing move in its own right. And when you have those types of coverage options with an item like Assault Vest, you gotta run because Copper Ajad is gonna eat hits from all your fairy types. This is definitely true. And with the added bulk from GMAX, you can also run a very reliable weakness policy set which can be very deadly on this one specifically. You can also just run a resist berry to make up for any of the weaknesses that it does have. Right, and weakness policy is a big one. We, I always mention that when it comes to a Pokemon that has really good defenses and a good amount of weaknesses, probably like at least three to five, because then there's enough that's hitting them super effectively, but they're taking the hit very well and they get that boost in their attack and in their special attack. But the other item is the Life Orb. I think this is another really good item on Copper Jaw because of Sheer Force. Even though only four moves are really mm -hmm. going to be benefiting from not taking the damage from the Life Orb Sheer Force, you're still going to be benefiting because you have 130 attack plus Life Orb plus your Gigantic Max moves. You get access to fighting moves and Brick Break and Body Press, so you get the access to the plus one in your attack there as well. It's very threatening to have Copper Jaw stare at you with a Life Orb. I definitely do agree. Life Orb Copper Jaw can be very scary already outside of G Max and giving a G Max to boost its stats while also having the option of stuff like Life Orb is insane. One of the one of the niche options I guess I had for items was gonna be a Chesto Berry. It doesn't have the best defensive stats. And if you do want to, 
I guess, set up with your with your Gigantamax. Go for your your uh, your max Knuckles to boost your attack, uh, or your max I guess Rock moves to boost your your Spideff, or your max with the Ground moves to boost your Spideff. Um, yep. You do have access to Resto Chesto, which could be pretty useful to gain back everything and then go for game with your regular Copper Jaw after your G Max is put in work. I definitely do agree that that could be a very niche but nice option as well, especially since Copper Jaw is not very prone to getting worn down due to its steel typing, being immune to toxic, resisting stealth rock. And I think another item that could work very well on it is Air Balloon, seeing as it only has three really like big weaknesses in fighting ground and fire. And taking away one of those weaknesses, at least for a little bit, is very nice in my opinion. 100%. And you, you mentioned it a bit. It has three weaknesses and it can't really handle all those on its own, so it needs to have some teammates. I have a couple teammates in mind, uh, but I do want to say before I jumped into them that Copper Raja being weak to those three types, all the Pokemon that resist those three exact types being fire, ground, and fighting, all of them have four times weaknesses. So if you want to draft one, like a Noivern, a Pelipper, or something like that, make sure you have appropriate answers to the type that that Pokemon is weak to, or else you're just going to be digging a hole for yourself. So were there any Pokemon that you saw sticked out the most for dealing with Copper Raja's weaknesses? There are a few that come to mind for me that I really like to pair with Copper Raja, and those are mainly just Wish Passers and like bulky fairies, specifically things such as Clefable and Aromatisse, seeing as they resist at least the fighting type, which is already very good, and then also being able to Wish up Copper Raja after having G-Max, after having been in for a few turns, taking some chip, and being able to claim more kills with it is very nice in my opinion. It definitely is. Fairy types are one of the best, and it's the start of the classic Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, I think that's mm -hmm. starting to be a bit less important than it used to be in draft, uh, but it's still a really solid core that resists a lot, and Copper Raja is a phenomenal steel type that you can find not the highest tiers of G Max Pokemon, but it'll be it'll be at least it'll be up there. Yep. One of the the important roles that I really want to have fulfilled on my teams whenever I would be drafting a G Max Copper Raja would be Trick Room with Teleport. Teleport, if you guys don't know, it has negative priority and it switches you out. One of the best setters is Slowbro. It also happens to get Trick Room, which is very important because Copper Jaw has a 30 base speed. There's also Gardevoir, Zatu, and Porygon 2, which all have tons of bulk. They all resist fighting except for the Porygon 2, but the big thing is bulk. They have tons of it. They can take two hits without going down. I have a special mention though for Zatu because Zatu is actually, of those four that I mentioned, Zatu is four times resisting fighting and it's immune to ground so it's a big benefit it's the only one of those four that does that and it's a huge boost for it i definitely do agree and i really like slow bros in particular seeing as it both resists fire it both resists fighting and it threatens out ground types with its water moves already so it really pairs well with copper Aha. it's very strong it's in general it's just a really strong pokemon it pairs well with so many different things so if you have Slowbro as one of your maybe round two or three picks, you're going to be very happy and pairing with Copper Aja in the long run will just benefit your team so much. Now, we, we covered pretty much everything. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about uh, before we got into a ranking for it? Um, there's one last thing that I really wanted to talk about and that is an option that we forgot to mention in the move pool section and that is Curse. Curse is such a good option on Copper Aja in my opinion as it already has a lackluster speed but boosting its defense and attack even higher is insane it's also a great stealth rock setting yeah so rocks and curse um i will say this is basically steel snorlax in a way because curse with even body press like its defense without the curse isn't that impressive but once you get two or three curses up i mean forget about it stealth rock is huge because i mean hazards are always good but you don't have to gigantamax first turn in most leagues. i don't think i've ever come across a league where it says g max turn one mm -hmm. and that's it yeah i definitely think that this could be like one of the best stealth rockers in terms of g max at least but yeah. there i don't think many g max get stealth rocks do they well i mean there's dreadnought that sets it with its move but yeah that's not like there's not too many that do all right well now we are going to get to the ranking if you could give this pokemon a ranking between 1 and 10, 10 being the best, where would you put it? I think i put it around a 7 or 8. It's very good in my opinion. It has very good defenses in G-Max. It has a phenomenal base attack, but its speed and outside of G-Max it is a little frail for a steel type, so it, it's not like a phenomenal Pokemon in my opinion. It's still very good, however. It is definitely a good Pokemon. Uh, I have it at a 7, so we're kind of on the same wavelength there, which is great, but mm -hmm. The reason I have it there is mostly because of its speed. My G-Maxes, I love them to be offensive. They hit hard, they hit fast, 
and they kind of get out of there once their G-Max turns wear off, or because they boosted up their speed and attack or special attack, they just continue to sweep your, your opponent's team. But Copper mm -hmm. Shock can't really do that because the only way it really sweeps is under Trick Room, which would only have four, three turns even, and you can't really, I guess, end a game in that many turns if your opponent mm -hmm. has three, four, five Pokemon left. The other thing is, the reason why it's actually as high as it is, is because of its max move. Its G-Max move is one of the best ones in the game. It's it's so unique, so incredible, and you've talked about it for long enough because it was such a useful move, such a useful mechanic that nothing gets except for G-Max Copper Raja. Another thing, its abilities, they aren't really benefited by G-Max. Heavy Slam doesn't really matter because Gigantic Max kind of ignores the weight mechanic. And then Sheer Force, you actually don't get the boost from Sheer Force on your max moves, even though all of them have secondary effects, which sucks. Mm -hmm. It definitely does suck a bit. However, I think just the raw power that it puts out it does make up for that and that's why it would still be very good of course at like a seven. Oh, absolutely i think it's a solid tier two g max pokemon and mm -hmm. i don't really see a like a, a path for it to go to tier one or fall down to tier three i don't either personally yeah well anyways you guys have heard what we think now i want to hear from you guys if you're watching this video comment what is your favorite or least favorite thing about g max copper Raja, or just your favorite G-Max Pokemon in general, and let me know why as well. If you want to learn more about G-Max Pokemon, feel free to check out the other videos in the series. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, consider subscribing. You've already made it to the end of the video, meaning you've probably enjoyed it. Oh, and don't forget to like the video as well. Thanks for joining me today, Lux. I really appreciate you coming on the channel. Why don't you let the people know where they can find you? You can find me on Twitter at Luxans or on YouTube under the name Luxans as well. I plan to start regularly uploading again soon, so be on the lookout for that. Yes, and Twitter is one of the best places to follow Lux. Uh, very, very high quality follow, so make sure to go check him out there. And of course on YouTube because he will be competing with me in the BBL for Season 5. This is true. I do want to say thank you for, to everyone for watching the series. We had a huge increase in subscribers and viewers on the series since the GMAX Starters videos went out, which was last week. And they were actually the most popular videos on the series so far, so thank you guys for your support. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.